bacterial meningitis common causes are less than 3 months it is group b streptococcus gram negative streptococcus pneumonia bacteria meningitis okay more than uh, like 3 months up to 10 years is streptococcus pneumonia and meningitis and adolescent it is a serious meningitis so causes is in the serious uh, streptococcus pneumonia in mesopharynx is direct uh, extension across skull fracture close focus of infection it can happen to all ages and uh, cochlear implants here salvatoria skull fractures okay uh, this you need to uh, just remember it okay just to have a uh, look at this chart okay so i just want to know what if you if you must have read what are the clinical uh, presentation that a patient comes to us with the face of, of uh, meningitis kind of uh, infection Name few clinical uh, presenting scenarios. What are the clinical presentation for such patients? Give me a few names to it. Different clinical scenarios. What is the clinical presentation for a patient suffering from meningitis? How a patient is presented to you? Different symptoms and signs you see. High grade fever, photophobia, neck stiffness, vomiting. Okay, very nice. Other. Good. Any other one? So, uh, so I, I just want to know, can anyone tell me what is the difference between a stupor and what is coma? Patient is presented to you with stupor and with coma. So what are the, uh, what is the difference between a stupor and a coma? This is also one of the clinical presentations that we see in meningitis patients. So what is, uh, what do you understand with the term stupor? So, like uh, coma is a person who is already in comatose position without any signs of awakeness. And stupor is usually we see when a uh, patient regains consciousness in between the intervals. Okay, so it can be one of the uh, clinical presentation for a, a patient with meningitis also. And uh, in what uh, we see rashes in such patients, what kind of rash? Okay, good. Very nice. Super at initial stages with the consciousness, some of reserves the condition. Okay, good. So, what kind of rashes do we see in uh, meningitis? Purpural rash. Okay, always remember we see purpural kind of a rash and such. And uh, it can also be accompanied by seizures, irritability, okay, aversion to light, restlessness, neck stiffness. So clinical features, fewer symptoms and signs of meningeal inflammation often preceded by symptoms of upper respiratory infections. In infants, it is non-specific fever, hypothermia, lethargy, respiratory distress, jaundice, pure, poor feeding, vomiting, seizure, irritability, or bulging consonant. And petechia and purpura with any of the one most commonly seen in serial meningitis. Always remember it is uh, purpural rash, just remember, okay, most common. Uh, so, uh, meningeal signs number one is neutral rigidity. Always remember this is the exam point of view. You should remember neutral erective movement or passive uh, neck flexion, chronic sign, okay, and Rudzinski sign, okay. You should uh, remember, you should know what are, but how do you examine a patient for chronic sign and Brzezinski sign? Signs are present in 80% of the children, more than bacterial uh, meningitis at the time of presentation. So you see, how do we do a uh, meningeal sign? Uh, Brzezinski sign, we, uh, we, we just flex the neck 
and we see there is a pulling up of these uh, knees. So if you have uh, examined a patient in uh, in your uh, wards or such, uh, you must be knowing how it is beautifully seen. Uh, for the chronic sign, it is a is like a bedside physical examination when you do. Uh, how, what is the positive chronic sign? It is the uh, elicitation of the pain or resistance with passive extension of the patient's knees past 135 degrees in the setting of meningeal irritation. If there is a meningeal irritation, we see there is a, a elicitation of pain and resistance with passive extension of the patient's knees, as you see in, in, in the diagram. So you should remember this thing by heart, okay? This is very important for your clinical uh, presentation and uh, for your exam point of view. Uh, bacterial, uh, how, do you how to evaluate such patient? Um, blood cultures are positive in 50% uh, with bacterial. CSF, we do lumbar punch. Okay, contraindications is uh, when we when we cannot do is cardiopulmonary compromise, signs of increase intracranial pressure, papillary edema, focal neurological signs, and skin infection. Okay, uh, and it is essential that antimicrobial therapy not be delayed if there is a contraindication to or inability to perform a lumbar puncture, or if the lumbar puncture is delayed by the need of cranial injury. You should always remember this. Okay, antimicrobial therapy should never be delayed. You should go for it. And CSF should be sent for the cell counting and differential glucose and protein, uh, gram stain and culture. And we need to do a viral PCR for such patients. So this is must be uh, anyone they must have seen how the how to position a patient. How many of you have uh, seen lumbar puncture? How many? Has anyone done it? So the gaps we see, uh, but so it is done like two-finger technique. Okay, the two-finger technique is the most common technique. Like we keep our fingers as we are L4 or L4 or L5 in between that gap we do a lumbar puncture directly. Just see the position of it. So, uh, interpretation uh, of CSF in special situations traumatic lumbar puncture treated presumably for meningitis, partially treated with minimal effect. Gram stain is the 90% is like of pneumococcal meningitis and 80% of meningococcus, okay? Gram positive is streptococcus pneumonia, gram negative neisseria meningitis, and gram positive coca is GBS. Okay, so these all are for your exam point of view. You should always remember it, uh, how, what, what kind of different gram the negative and positive are suggestive, okay? So, what are the neurological findings that we see for such patients that you already know and you told me is altered con uh, consciousness from somnolence to coma. Okay, increased intracranial pressure, bulging fontanelle, as I told, headache, palsies of third, fourth, and fifth cranial nerves, papillary edema, hypertension is seen, bradycardia, respiratory depression, that is Cushing stride. Hypertension along with bradycardia and respiratory depression. Cushing triad is seen. Always remember. It is a late sign of increased intracranial pressure. Seizures, that is typically generalized in first 48 hours. In 30 of the patients, I told you a patient of mine that I depicted it all. It is it was generalized only. It was first 48 hours in 30. And uh, seizures later in the course of one uh, is focal and may indicate cerebral injury. So focal findings are hemiparesis or it can be facial paths. The neuroimaging CT is necessary, okay? Before lumbar puncture, we go for CT scan. 
altered mental status, papilledema, focal neurological deficit, PSF shunt, okay. Hydrocephalus, we need to see CNS trauma, any history of neurosurgery. See, uh, negative and positive histories are very important for every patient that you do. It's not just because then that is because for every patient you need to have it. And uh, what are the what is the best diagnostic you should always choose? Rather than best, you should go for a rapid diagnostic methods, okay, so that you can treat a patient good in a short span of time. Complications. So, uh, so, what are the complications for any kind of a meningitis that you see for such patients? So, it can precipitate into abscess. It can it cause effusion. It can cause empyema, thrombolysis, thrombosis also uh, causes in, uh, impaired mental status. There can be seizures, focal deficits. Usually we see is hearing loss, the most common. Cranial nerve pulses. There can be development of disabilities, hydrocephalus and SIADA. So management is uh, need to go step by step. Okay, patient has come up with the fever. Treat the fever. Treat the pain. Then we go further. Okay, we need to. Uh, Persistence or recurrence of fever causes inadequate treatment, nosocomial infection, difficult uh, continuation of the dexamethasone, development of suppurative complication, and drug given. A diagnosis of exclusion. So we need to do CSF analysis. We need to repeat it. Okay. So usually in prior early stages of the disease, in bacterial meningitis, we, we skip the diagnosis many a times or we treat it in the other way. Therefore, we need to repeat CSF samples for that. Okay. And, uh...